we're not in the business of out consoling Sony or out consoling Nintendo. What he should have said is, not anymore. Once upon a time, they were in the market of out consoling Sony, and they were doing a decent job at it. By the way, this is from the XCast interview back when Phil Spencer had to go out and do the rounds because Redfall was so disappointing. Um, there isn't really a great solution or win for us. And I know that will upset a ton of people, but it's just the truth of the matter is that when you're third place in the console marketplace and the top two players are as strong as they are and have... One of the reasons why they are so strong is because of how weak Xbox has become. It's gone to the point that anytime Phil Spencer opens his mouth, you're expecting him to say some shit that's going to lower the morale of the community. It has gotten to the point now, anytime you see his face, you're expecting bad news. You're expecting to hear the sounds of defeat. And contrary to what Phil is going to say here, it's not because of Sony, it's not because of Nintendo, it's because of Xbox's self-inflicted wounds. So many bad strategies. And to be clear, it didn't start with Xbox Series X, it started with Xbox One. The E3 disaster, the Kinect that didn't pan out. Focusing on cable TV, which is the last thing somebody that's buying a console is really interested in. So to be fair to Phil, he inherited a mess. And he's done a lot of good things over the years. But they started to retrace their steps and ended back up where they started. Um, in certain cases, very, very dis discreet focus on doing deals and other things that will um, that kind of make being Xbox hard for us as a team that's on us, not on anybody else. Our vision is that everybody who's on console has to feel like they have a great experience and they're a first class citizen. They've invested a ton in our platform. Let's stop it right here. It's hard to feel like a first class citizen when you have the Series S, when you have Game Pass PC, when you have the cloud. If you're a PC player, it's great. You have the Game Pass on PC. If you're a mobile player, it's great news too. You can use the cloud to play Xbox games. It's wonderful. However, if you're an Xbox Series X owner, not only do you always feel like the console's being held back by the Xbox Series S, whether or not that's true doesn't matter. That is the perception they created when they made an Xbox Series S. And because you do boast so much about being the strongest console on earth, which again, a lot of people don't really care about, not that you're that much ahead of Sony in the first place, but because that's where you put the bulk of your marketing and because you do have that Game Pass on PC, you had a lot of players comparing your console to actual PCs. And when you did do these comparisons, you would quickly realize if you spent a couple hundred dollars more, you can have a better experience and have something with more utility. So these clouds that continue to loom over Xbox, they created it. Not Sony, not Nintendo. But we are not in a position, and I, I see it out there. I see commentary that if you just build great games, everything would turn around. It's just not true that if we go off and build great games, all of a sudden you're going to see console share shift in some dramatic way. We lost the worst generation to lose in the Xbox One generation where everybody built their digital library of games. Um, so when you go and you're building on Xbox, we want our Xbox community to feel awesome. But this idea that if we just focused more on great games on our console, that somehow we're going to win the console race, I think doesn't really lay into the reality of most people, like 90% of the people every year who walk into a retailer to buy a console are already a member of one of the three ecosystems and their digital library is there. This is the first generation where the big games that they're playing um, were games that were available last gen. When you think about Fortnite and Roblox and Minecraft, like the continuity from generation to generation is so strong. I see a lot of pundits out there that kind of want to go back to the time where we all had cartridges and discs and every new generation was a clean slate and you could switch the whole console share. That's just not the world that we are in today. There is no world where Starfield's an 11 out of 10 and people start selling their PS5s. That's not going to happen. Nintendo has the weakest hardware out of all the consoles, and yet they're in second place. That should show you that not too many people care about power when shopping for a console. It seemed like the only time Xbox being the strongest console mattered was before it actually came out. Once it came out, and once the games came out, People weren't really talking about that as much, were they? 
And so Xbox made an other error in judgment. They put all of their marketing strategy behind being the strongest console and not enough towards convincing people you're going to have the very best games you can possibly play on our platform. Nintendo being in second place should show you how powerful games can be. The Switch being the weakest console doesn't really matter all that much. When you have must-play games like Breath of the Wild, and in terms of library size, a lot of times less is more. Xbox thought they would dizzy you with this flurry of games on their Game Pass. Look guys, look at all these games you can play. But how many of them are actually worth playing? How many of them can you play on a different platform? And when you do the math, there's only a small percentage of games on there that you can't play anywhere else. And in my opinion, most of the exclusive games that came out in this generation were disappointing to me. In this entire generation, I think one of the most well-received, most talked about games is Hi-Fi Rush. And while it is true, some people do choose an ecosystem and they choose to stay in that ecosystem forever. I think Steam has one of the biggest footholds in all of gaming. Talk about choosing an ecosystem and staying there, all of your games in one place. I mean, if you're a PC gamer for years, you didn't have much choice. Yet here we are, and Epic actually launched their own store. How were they able to do this? It was Fortnite. That game changed everything for Epic. You know, in my opinion, Xbox could have got more value sending scouts out there to recruit smaller teams that are making games like Power World, for example, rather than spending a gazillion dollars on Activision and Bethesda, who has done nothing but hurt their brand up until this point, as far as I'm concerned. We'll get more into those acquisitions in a minute. Sure, he's right. People do consider where their friends are playing and where all their games are at. But if that was the biggest factor, they would never have lost the lead that they built with the 360. But the reality is, a lot of people were willing to leave their friends and their games behind and switch over to PlayStation. And it really comes down to one thing. Confidence. No disrespect to Phil Spencer, but I feel a lot of times he does more harm than good when he opens his mouth. And while I do appreciate when he says things like, I'm not going to lie to the community, I'm going to say it like it is, maybe you shouldn't say certain things like it is if you're going to end up looking like a weak, defeated motherfucker as a result. Um, so what we have to do, and we have this unique vision because we see what creators want to do. Creators want to build games that can meet players on any screen. People play with their friends regardless of what other screen they're on. And the console is the core of the Xbox brand. There's no doubt. So so like we will stay focused on making sure that console experience is awesome. But I know some people want to hold us up of just being a better green version of what the blue guys do. Um, and I'm just going to say, like, there's not a win for Xbox in staying in the wake of somebody else. We have to go off and do our own thing with Game Pass, with the stuff we do with xCloud and the way we build our games. Why is it exactly that you have to go in a different direction than everyone else? I think it's because this was the plan all along. They didn't buy Bethesda and Activision to sell more consoles. And I don't think that's an unreasonable take because I'm actually basing it off his own philosophy that exclusive games aren't going to do very much when it comes to selling consoles. And sure, with all these rumors now circulating, them getting out of the console race, them putting Starfield on PlayStation, it's really easy to say I knew it all along. But I feel like the writing was always on the wall. They backed themselves into a corner and the reason why they bought these companies was to make money off of selling them across different platforms. And so if these rumors are true, and that's a big if, it's hard for me to believe that only four months ago Phil Spencer was saying if you want to play Starfield, the only way to play it is on Xbox or if you have a gaming PC. And only four months later, they're having this dramatic shift in strategy without a rough draft. This kind of thing doesn't just happen out of the blue. It was always on the table, and they just continued to get closer and closer to that table until they fell right on top of it. And so my question is, if they said you can only play Starfields in the Xbox ecosystem to enter the holiday season and to end the fourth quarter by making a final push to sell consoles, one last hurrah. They knew full well they were going to be selling these games on other platforms, but this is what they said anyway. Are there any legal ramifications? And to the PlayStation fans celebrating this, this is the worst possible thing that could actually happen to PlayStation. Prepare for them to milk your asses dry. Less innovation, less competitive pricing, less risks for more money. I don't expect Phil Spencer to go out there and debunk every rumor. He doesn't have enough time in the world to do that. 
However, when a rumor gets this big and out of control, it's a good thing to get on top of it if it's not true. One thing we do know is that he was made aware of it because he did in fact address it. He said, I see all you guys, we'll let you know something next week. And I think it's more than reasonable to think that if the rumors weren't true, he would have took that time to shoot them down right then, right there. But he didn't. And the chaos ensues.